Over the last couple of weeks, unsurprisingly, there's been a greatly increased interest in the new UK CA mark. Manufacturers' attention appears to have at last moved on from COVID and are now becoming focused on how to mark their products after the end of the transition period. So this short talk is intended to help resolve what we do now know. First, let's make it clear what we're not talking about. This discussion is not for food or agricultural products, marine equipment, medical devices, road vehicles, chemicals, medicines, rail inoperability, transportable pressure equipment, construction products or civil explosion products. For all these, there are other more specific requirements and they're not being discussed here. For most other presently CE marked products from the 1st of January 2021, the GB market will accept either UK CA marking or CE marking. Many CE marked products will continue to be allowed until the 1st of January 2022, unless the EU changes its relevant legislation and Great Britain doesn't keep in step. Some newly manufactured products will need UK CA marking from day one. If they're already being sold in Great Britain, and a third-party approval system is required by the regulations. EU third-party approvals will no longer be accepted for newly manufactured products from the 1st of January 2021. UK approved bodies will instead be required and the, and the product will need to be UK CA marked. If a product is already on the market as part of existing stocks, say at distributors or fully manufactured but not yet delivered to the customer, the sale of CE marked products of any form can continue after the 1st of January. Obviously, this would only be for a short period, and you will need to justify the process perhaps by providing copies of sales of goods documents. I've been referring to Great Britain up till now, rather than the UK, as Northern Ireland is a special case, and presently the position is that Northern Ireland will continue to accept all forms of CE marked equipment without a present limitation date. It's important to note, however, that Northern Ireland will not be accepting UK CA marked equipment unless it also has a CE mark. Northern Ireland will also have its own marking system, the UK NI mark, and Northern Ireland manufacturers will be able to either mark their products with a CE or with UK NI. However, both the marking system and any associated details are yet to be issued, so at the moment it's difficult to properly discuss this arrangement. All we can say is that presently, and I stress presently, as this area appears fluid, UK CA marking only applies to Great Britain and Northern Ireland is expected to be a special case. So, the marks being used in the UK will be the UK CA mark, GB only, not Northern Ireland, the CE mark, GB until the 1st of January 2022, unless UK approved body requirements exists and presently with no limitation Northern Ireland. The UK NI mark Northern Ireland only and possibly even the CE mark somehow associated with the UK NI mark again Northern Ireland only. As the Northern Ireland situation is fluid with little concrete guidance let's instead focus just on GB. We will come back to Northern Ireland in another talk once clarity emerges. As of the 1st of January, the technical requirements for UK CA marked equipment will be identical for CE marked equipment. The intention is for that to stay throughout 2021, but EU legislative changes may have an impact on this. The technical standards used will be fundamentally the same. However, although the technical content is the same for UK CA marking, the British Standards Institute version of the standards should be used. Instead of EU harmonised standards, the UK will identify UK designated standards and this will provide a presumption of conformity in a similar way to the ones that EU ones do now. We are still waiting to see how this list will be controlled or provided. But as I say, from day one, they will be fundamentally the same, both as a list and in content. Manufacturers will need to produce a dedicated declaration of conformity and or incorporation for UK CA marking. So, if the product is also CE marked, there will be at least two versions of these declarations. I say at least because of the Northern Ireland situation. Noting that either CE or UK CA marking requires compliance with all relevant directives or regulations, 
And the recommended position nowadays is for, to have a combined declaration for all relevant ones, whether it's for low voltage equipment, pressure equipment directive, hazardous area equipment, etc., etc. Over time, the UK CA mark will become controlled in similar ways to the present CE mark. But for the immediate future, until, until 1st of January 2023, it won't need to be permanently fixed. So, for example, it could just be a sticker. The UK regulations that take over the requirements of the EU directives and regulations will, as of the 1st of January, be very similar. So, if you're already familiar with the process and requirements of CE marking, you should have little difficulties with the UK versions. There should be no reason why you would need two separate technical files. The same one could be used for both CE and UKCA. But if you want to hold two separate files, that's up to you. This could be a factor, as suddenly and overnight, many companies import either into GB or into the EU, not forgetting Northern Ireland, will in most cases have significantly more responsibilities and they will need to be able to provide the technical file to authorities if ever it is ever asked. If the manufacturer undertakes the importing, then that makes it simpler. But third party importers may be asking for copies of the manufacturer's technical files as their responsibilities can last for 10 years after supply. In many cases, end users will suddenly become importers, buying directly from manufacturers in the EU or vice versa. Importers into the EU, into Great Britain and into Northern Ireland will all be asked to check manufacturers' documentation and they should be checking the validity of the declaration, that a suitable technical file exists and that these can be provided if ever asked. As I say, this might go for, two, for 10 years. The quality of manufacturers' declarations could very quickly become important, whereas at the moment they may not be. For many goods, the name and addresses of importers need to be identified either on the product or on the packaging, so additional labelling is required. Finally, some manufacturers appoint an authorised representative. If so, the authorised representative must be based in the EU for CE marked products and the UK for UK CA marked products.